Again, I'm Scott Andrew, I'm running for county judge. Um, and uh, I respect the question. Um, I've never read the act. Uh, I don't know enough about the act to tell you how I would rule on it. Um, you know, the devil is in the details when you're a judge. So I don't think I could paint with a broad brush and say that I'd uphold it or I would strike it down. I think it would be presumptuous on my part to give you a ruling without reading the act. So I appreciate your question. I just, uh, I honestly could not answer it. So I'll pass the mic to my. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, with all due respect, I think that um, those questions are, are, are good questions, and I think they're, they're certainly important to ask. Um, but something that's been really important to me is, is making decisions and, and talking about things that I, that I know about. Um, I also think that that's the type of decision that's going to be made way above my paper. And with all due respect to the people that are going to be making those decisions way above my pay grade, my job would be to follow whatever it is that they, that they decide. And I think that's important for you all to know, that it's going to be our job to follow the law as it's set out by our legislature and interpreted by our Supreme Court. Not to add to your disappointment, but I'm familiar with the Congress a lot, but I'll tell you what, one of the problems of fronting candidates for judicial office in your scenario is that a Supreme Court decision is really the start of lower court litigation. It's not the end of the Whatever issues are, are addressed by the Supreme Court and when it's done, things that go back down to the trial court, it's foreseeable that something could end up in the circuit court, perhaps even in the county court. And so I, I hate to add to your disappointment, but that's, that's pretty much it. I'm going to have to disappoint you too. Uh, you know, with uh, case precedent set by the Supreme Court, that might be something that we might be bound by should there be a set of circumstances that come before us as uh, potentially if we're elected to the circuit court. So uh, it's a wait and see. And I don't think it would be appropriate for us to comment currently on uh, what decisions should or should not be made. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Regarding your question, uh, when each of us filed to become candidates or judges, um, we had to review the canons and the other rules and regulations that guide us and, and are applicable to us. And, and one of those was that we could not comment on cases or matters that potentially could come before us. And there was always a potential that something related or indirectly or directly to any decision that may come out of the Supreme Court could affect one of the cases before us. And so in order to be fair and impartial and apply the rule of law, we cannot sit here as a candidate or as a judge and try to indicate how you rule. There are so many factors that go into cases. We have to hear all the evidence. Thank you. Hello again. Um, I agree with each and every one of my colleagues. Uh, Commerce Clause is a very important issue. However, I do agree that there's always a possibility that something will come before us. As a circuit court judge, it's our job to follow the law, not make the law. So whatever the Supreme Court decide, that's what I would be bound by. Well, when you're down the line, and I'm Jack Day, by the way, you, most of the intelligent responses have already been made. Uh, Ms. Lester, let me talk to you about the decision-making process of the judge. Uh, it's a little like manufacturing. You gather together all the raw materials, uh, you gather together all of the tools that, that are available for it, and you go to work. If you're part of a group like the nine people on the Supreme Court, you're not going to work in a collegial basis with give and take and discussion. Those folks not only have their years of experience, their expertise, their educations, massive law libraries, staffs of law clerks, they have the benefit of uh, briefs, which are missed over because they're going to stack up about this high, uh, from the parties and argument of the cases. Uh, you, you work with all that stuff and then you try to get it right. And uh, God bless them, I hope they get it right. Agnes McCabe, I have to say ditto for my colleagues up here on the dais. But I can envision a situation where that might come before us, sir, for the questioner. Um, if, um, if I was lucky enough to win the election, I was assigned to the civil bench, or if any of us were assigned to the civil bench, someone could sue their employer locally and an issue could be whether or not 
the Affordable Health Care Act compelled that employer to get insurance for their employees. So that would be something that could come specifically before one of us as a sitting judge. So we can't comment on how we would interpret the law. Thank you. Thank you.